The Canon EF 75 to 300 millimeter zoom lens. Can this be used for astrophotography? The pros say no, but I say screw it, we're gonna try anyway. If you don't already know, the trick to astrophotography is long exposures. The longer you keep that shutter open, the more light you let in and you get all this beautiful detail. But there's a problem. The Earth rotates. So when you open that shutter and the stars are moving, they call star trails, like this. So how do we get around that? With a magical tool called the Star Tracker. A Star Tracker is a device that sits on top of your tripod and faces north. It rotates counterclockwise the same speed as the Earth, so you can open your shutter for a very long time and it looks like the sky is standing still. Like this. You put a ball head on top of the Star Tracker so you can aim your camera in any direction and it'll still rotate with the Earth. Why does the Star Tracker need to be the number one thing you buy over any lens? Because it turns all your lenses into astrophotography lenses. A wide angle zoom lens, astrophotography lens. The Nifty 50, astrophotography lens. 75 to 300 millimeter zoom lens, astrophotography lens. A can of beans with a broken beer bottle, astrophotography lens. The problem with zoom lenses and astrophotography is they could potentially move in the middle of your shoot, causing things to go out of focus and all sorts of other problems. So we're going to get around that by using man's best friend. Sorry, Sagan, man's other best friend. Duct tape. <laughs> now you're not going anywhere. Before we get much further, I just want to be real with you guys. This lens is indeed garbage. I got it for $75. It actually comes with a lot of cameras. At 300 millimeters, it's quite fuzzy. I cannot get a sharp picture with this to save my life. So we've taped it down to 200 millimeters. See if that's a little cleaner. Uh, I know the uh, galaxy is going to be kind of small in the picture, but you got to do what you got to do. After tonight, I'm sacrificing this to the gods. We'll be shooting at 200 millimeters. The camera settings will be ISO 1600, aperture F5, and a shutter speed of 60 seconds. So you'll need an intervalometer or a remote. Plus we're going to be taking multiple exposures to stack them together to bring out all the detail. Now the last thing we have to do is figure out where the hell Andromeda is. So we're gonna look in our app Stellarium. I'm gonna scroll over to the northeast and look up and we'll see three stars. See these three right here? If we take the middle one and go up to the left, we'll find Andromeda. Just keep in mind that these three stars actually take up a huge portion of the northeast sky. It's a lot bigger and higher than you think it is. All right, now I'm out here in a dark field. I've got my star tracker polar aligned with the north star. And I've got my camera on top. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to focus the lens manually. You have to do it manually and I'm going to do that by using live view on my camera and a star. Actually, I'm going to use Jupiter tonight because when, the, when you see the, the moons come into focus, that's when you know you're really in focus. After that, we're going to have to find Andromeda and that's going to be a good time. All right, now we've got Jupiter in the middle of the screen and I've got live view on. I'm gonna zoom in just like this and it looks a little fuzzy. I'm gonna turn the focus wheel until I can see its moons. Oh, there they are. Trying to get it as small of a pinpoint as I can and when I can see the moons good and clear, sharp. That, that is in focus. Quick note, you may notice a red blob around the star or planet while focusing. That's called color fringing. It's gonna show up in your photos. It's just part of using a really cheap lens, but you can take care of that in post-processing. Now, uh, now that we're in focus, I've pointed the camera at the direction I think Andromeda is in, and I've turned my ISO up really high, and I've just got a two second uh, shutter speed. I'm just gonna search the sky for it, so here we go. That's not it. <laughs> That's not it. <laughs> Holy crap, that's it, I think. That's it, we found it, aha, Andromeda Galaxy. So now I'm gonna set my camera settings to an ISO of 1600 and a shutter speed of 60 seconds. All right, the test shot looks awesome. So I'm gonna set the intervalometer to take 65 shots and I'm gonna go inside and relax. One hour later. All right, now that that's done, we have one thing left to do, and I'm gonna take the lens cap 
I'm gonna put it back on the top of the lens, try not to move the focus, and I'm gonna take 20 more shots. Those are going to be stacked together to remove noise. So here we go. So that's that. That's the best I can do with the 75 to 300 millimeter zoom lens. Not the best, but you know what? It's always a blast to see a galaxy on the back of your camera screen. So I encourage you to go out with whatever you have and just have fun. In my next video, I'm going to show you how I stacked and processed the images to make the final photograph. So please like and subscribe. And remember, stay spacey. Good night. Take.